So he has some very specific, I've, I haven't seen anything as um, honed in as what he has as far as for different genres and how to approach things and just the structure of copy. So I uh, would love to hear thoughts on uh, the class or takeaways for those of you who were there. Um, I, I have, I took like four or five pages of notes on this guy. Um, and I thought it was good. Uh, one of the things that I found interesting was that he said, you're not always talking, you know, when you get your script and you're like, okay, I'm going to, this, uh, this is going to be, I'm going to be talking to my sister, Jan. And she, you know, this is her demographic and she'll, and I'm excited about this thing. I'm going to tell her about it. And the way that he said, depending on what your what your script is, who it's to, you're not always talking necessarily to an individual. And he he made the he specifically said, and don't always talk to the same individual. Because I know people who do say they're always talking to their best friend. It's like they're always telling their best friend about whatever the script is. But I like that he said sometimes you're talking to a crowd. Sometimes you're talking to an individual, but sometimes you're talking to a crowd. And so that changes the way that you're going to talk and how loud you're going to talk and everything. So, I mean, he, he kind of broke some things down that I thought were interesting that I hadn't heard. I was mind blown when he, the very first at the beginning, when he talked about who chooses the voiceover actor, that was, yeah, true, you know, really? Yeah. So I still want to talk more about that you know, I wanted to ask him about 50 questions after, after that part of the event. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because why don't we ever hear that? That's it is, it's interesting talking said. to him. Oh, go ahead, Summer. Oh, that's one of the things he said. He was like, it's not even industry knowledge. He was like, this is almost like a, it's like the best kept secret <laughs> in the industry is actually the copywriters are usually the ones who get first dibs. And I'm like, wait, what? Okay. And then the fact that he said, approach it like a collaborative effort with the copywriter, that's a different perspective than just, this is a character, like you were saying, this is a character speaking to this other character. Oh, a collaborative effort with layers of emotion and layers of um, intention. Mm -hmm. um, I like how he talked about um, just pick a direction and then just go for it. Don't guess, even if it's, it's not necessarily going to be a right or wrong direction, just pick one and commit to it because they'll hear the idea of the commitment, even if they don't like the direction you picked. And that is like, oh, cause they will remember, they will remember, well, this person had a committed thought. And for that reason alone, I may want to ask them to read it with a different attitude, but they were committed to what they were doing. They picked their direction and they just went for it. And I thought, well, that takes a lot of the fear out of the audition of, oh, is this what they want to hear? Is this not what they want to hear? I'm going to do the best I can with the direction I'm given. But if I'm dedicated to that direction, then I want them to definitely hear that. Because apparently that's important. <laughs> so yeah. I, I was like you, Barbie. I took, um, I didn't take five notes, but I took almost three. Well, I have yeah. smaller, I have small pages. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah, there were, there were quite a few things that he, that he put out there and yeah, I just, I liked how he said, if you do two audition, if you do two takes, make sure both takes are strong. Don't do like a mild take and then a strong take make sure you pick two different ways to do a strong take because if somebody else has like this laid back quieter you know more demure take or however he put it and you come in with two strong ones that are different from each other their chances are they're not listening to the other person anymore mm -hmm. so I thought that was really good advice mm -hmm. yeah And also the stuff he said about the announcer voice, by the way, was very interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What specifically? Well, he, he was saying, and the announcer voice isn't what people are assuming that it is, oh. he, that 
that it doesn't always mean don't get in there and be enthusiastic and a little over the top, that it really is that voice that that is a made up voice that used to be like the announcer voice that you hear. And he says, that's what most people are talking when they, about when they said, when they say, don't do the announcer voice, right? Do, do you, I mean, is that what you heard too? The way I understood it, the way I wrote it down, because the way it computed for me was, there's a difference between the announcer sound and being the announcer of a product. If you're the voice of the product, you are announcing it but you don't necessarily have to sound like the radio announcer guy yeah. of back in the day. That's the way I understood him in the context of it. Because we, yeah. I think, and because a lot of the conversations I've had with other people with like coaches is, oh, don't sound announcery. And he kind of, yeah, he explained the difference between you are being the announcer versus sounding like an announcer. Yeah, he, he used the term like a put on voice. Yeah. Yeah. The ladies and gentlemen versus. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Like the circus, the yeah. circus guy. Yeah. yeah the big <laughs> Boys stuff, yeah. and girls. Yeah. Yeah. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, but you still need the enthusiasm of the product if you're the voice that's picked to do it or service or, or whatever the, the voiceover calls for. Well, and I think that the word conviction is really important there too, because conviction doesn't have, I mean, you know, enthusiasm, sure. It, it obviously depends on the product, depends on a lot of things, like how much energy you're putting into it, but the conviction needs yeah. to be there regardless. You know, if you're announcing for a product, you need to believe what you're saying. And if what, if you conveying what the script is saying and you believing it leads you to be more loud and enthusiastic, that's okay to do. Yeah. You know, because you're being authentic to what, you, you know, to how you're communicating what's there. But, you know, so it really does depend. And that's one thing I like about his approach is that you can learn when to be softer, you know, and still have that conviction, you know, because the script calls for it and the, to be authentic, that's what you would do. Um, And when, when to be bigger and that's okay. I felt like one of the things that he you know, that I'm gathering that uh, was a takeaway was giving permission to be enthusiastic. Like it's okay. Um, you know, if you know, when, if you know, when and how, then, uh, you know, it doesn't all have to be low key. And that's something that I had to work away from because I used to do a ton of work for Pandora. And one of the things that Pandora, um, they say is that you have to remember that you are, you know, a lot of times people are listening to you with earbuds in, and so it's very intimate. And so like my default was to be very intimate, no matter what. And so I had to like learn, like not only get permission, but like learn that it's not just okay, but good sometimes to be bigger. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes it calls for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But go on. Seems like you all had some more things to say about that. Um, well, not about that specifically, but I like that you're using the word conviction because that is so important. It's so it's different than enthusiasm. And it's and like you said, you can have conviction whether you're you're big or or bringing it down. You the conviction would will still is it brings sort of an intensity of an intention, like what Summer was talking about. But I like the also going along with this where he said there are no, there is never a neutral phrase. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was a just to keep that at the forefront when you're looking at your script, there's nothing that's throwaway on there. Um, yeah. And so like every word, every phrase, every sentence is with intention, whether it's the setup or the, uh, what's the other the payoff or the reason the payoff the yeah yeah yep i wrote that down too I was like, oh <laughs> that gives me a different perspective for sure reading yeah. through copy of everything yeah nothing is neutral okay and especially he hearing happen. it from the copywriter yes right yes i mean they put it out there and they put every word out there with intention yeah this is purposeful so i need to find what that is 
that that purpose behind it that intention his intention i guess it's the person who wrote it really yeah What I thought was interesting is he said he talked about the opening line is the most important. It's the setup. And uh, because I'm working with the coach right now and he's asked me to kind of find the essence of the um, the copy. And, um, you know, quite often it's like, you know, we're selecting things further down in the copy itself as opposed to. Uh, the first line being the most important. So I'm I'm still kind of kind of working through that because I'm getting conflicting information, quite honestly, and I haven't really been able to kind of uh, sort through it all and kind of come to a comfortable understanding. Um, because I'm very new to well, fairly new to VO, but um, but I thought his his whole presentation really. Um, presented uh, just kind of opened my mind my mind a little bit more about um, you know the importance of being able to tap into the sensory feeling and communicate that um, and also he mentioned he talked about you know dynamic feeling and layers um, um, you know feelings having many layers and being able to communicate that I thought that that was really interesting as well something that I'd love to work towards. <laughs> So um, something that I, what I liked, all of what you guys said, I, that also stuck with me, but I also really appreciated um, when he had us, when he had a couple of people read and I wish that we could do more of it. So he can, it, it, you know, I like it when it's practical and I can see it in action, his advice in action. If we had a, um, a couple more, a few more people be able to do it, it would be even more effective in the different genres and different types. Um, I thought that was very effective. Um, and coming to some aha moments as we're, you know, talking through it and asking questions, is it this, is it that? Oh, it's not that, oh, that's not what I meant. I meant to say, thank you for asking that. So it was, it was um, I think it was good for him as well to be able to more clearly verbalize what he was trying to tell us and explain to us. Yeah, I like the way he like on that one commercial that was the the cough was about the, the icky cough or whatever. And he says, bring that icky cough into your voice, that rasp into your voice in that first sentence, like because we've all have been there. We've all felt that feeling of having that cough and. I just like the way that he, you know, he, he brought all of those little nuances and it's all a part of the acting that, um, you know, that we, that we need to be doing as we're looking at this, not just the reading and, and like the one guy that did the first commercial that did a really great job. Um, and he said, archi architecture wise, it was really good, but he was a little too lyrical which I wouldn't even have, I probably wouldn't have noticed that. And so I thought that was really interesting, you know, just making the little notes on things like that and making sure that you're not sing-songing your way through something. And I have a tendency to do that. So <laughs> I, I wrote exclamation point, <laughs> lyrical. I think as a, as a former musician, and maybe the lyricalness is harder to escape. I don't know. I also like that he um, spoke about, somebody asked about punctuation, and that was a question that was in my mind. And if I remember correctly, he said, you know, it's not a super, the copywriter isn't always um, committed to a particular punctuation. And then sometimes they are, but it's you, it's, the voiceover has the liberty to kind of figure out what the interpretation should be and then put the appropriate or remove the appropriate um, punctuation. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, um, and I would say to your point, um, Yvette, and I have so many comments about different things that you all have said, but when you talked about the the so you talked about it as getting to the essence of the script 
And uh, John talks about concepts, which is, I think, probably a similar thing. Um, and so it's important to come to that concept to know what it is, because even what you just said, Marguerite, or what we've all been saying about even, uh, you know, not guessing and even being able to be committed, you know, before you can be committed, before you can have conviction, you have to know what it is that you're talking about. You have to know what you're doing big picture, because if you, you could say, I'm going to be committed on this line, or I'm going to be committed in this word, but if it doesn't ultimately tie into a bigger picture, like literally like a transcendent idea, then it's not going to be coherent. It's not going to make any sense. So um, it is really important to come to the essence of the script, to be able to distill it down and know what the concept is. And one thing I've learned about concepts is that uh, one of the best ways to learn about concepts, you have to be watching commercials like that. And so if you don't know the difference, if you can't conceptualize you know, this type of commercial, even if they're both retail uh, from another kind, then you're going to miss the mark, you know, the whole way through. You might be, you know, the most committed person ever, but you're committed to the wrong thing. So um, knowing, being able to distill what the essence is or the concept is um, will give you the ability to be able to be committed and to be, con you know, have that conviction. So I don't feel like it's an either or, like the essence is more important, important than the first line, but knowing what the essence of the commercial is gives you the ability to, to properly set it up with that first line. So it's it's this, you know, great bigger picture. Does that make sense? Or is that helpful is to like to think about, you know, if you essence versus, you know, the actual first line. Cool. Yes, it does. Yeah, for sure. Um, and so, and that, you know, for me, if you're, I think it's helpful if you're, I mean, I get nerdy about it. It's fun to to start watching you know, different commercials and seeing those little nuances, like the music versus the visuals. Um, you know, the how the voiceover plays in, and uh, you know, figuring all those things out across genres and even like within genres. Um, so it's a fun thing, and it, it really does help you to um, to not have to to guess, and you can properly set those things up, which helps you to be a collaborator because if you if you are figuring those things out, then you're kind of getting inside the copywriter's head. So then, you know, you're much more likely to nail that first line or, or the big idea uh, because, you know, it really does feel like a collaboration with them. Yeah, I wish they would always give us the storyboard and the music and, you know, so you, so we could get the feel. It's so much easier when you have at least one or two of those pieces. Um, to get you get you into that you know quicker i think but it's it's definitely i would i mean i don't know how often they do that but for me it hasn't been very often sometimes but not often not often it's crazy 